Uh, my name is Keith Quinn. Uh, some of you know me as Sanio on the forums uh, for Shroud of the Avatar. Shroud of the Avatar is a free to play uh, game. Shroud of the Avatar is a free to play uh, <clears throat> Okay, uh, Shroud of the Avatar is a free to play game. Uh, you can find that at shroudoftheavatar.com. Uh, I am, uh, I think I'm being hosted through the Shroud the Avatar official channel, but I'm broadcasting through my own uh, personal channel, and I am Sanio, uh, trying to get a handle on this, uh, have my own channel a little bit more, and I'm doing enough. Uh, so, uh, what I do sometimes is, uh, uh, I do wear several hats uh, for Shroud the Avatar, I'm a level designer, quest designer, I do a bunch of things. I, I uh, set up player own towns, uh, and if you're, uh, if you have a player own town that's moving to Sprinder or being created there, uh, I'll be the guy setting that up. Uh, that's our new continent for our episode 2 map. And uh, today, uh, I, uh, I've been working on a quest lately uh, that takes place in Novia, which is our uh, primary continent. And uh, uh, there's a, a the quest uh, takes place uh, in the South Palatus area, and part of it takes place in a, a new scene that is called Bunker C. And uh, Bunker, uh, there's already been a, a, a different bunker in our game, uh, Bunker T, which is in uh, accessible from Airy. Uh, so if you know. Uh, uh, there's a quest that will send you there, or you can just go there on your own. Uh, but Bunker C is, is pretty similar. Uh, there'll be some differences to it. And I won't explain all the differences, but uh, uh, there will be some. So we're looking at uh, uh, Bunker C right now. Here's some pieces of it. Uh, these pieces on the left are actually pieces from uh, Bunker T. Uh, I know I want to rework some of the bits, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not done yet. And you can see uh, in the original Bunker T, there was water right here, but in this one, there's going to be lava, so that's a little bit of hint, maybe, of where it's going to be. And, and you can see a lot of the, uh, the pipes are rusty. And I've been working on another room over here. I work on the rooms uh, basically like uh, as modules, so when I'm done, I will shift the rooms around to, to reconnect. So where Bunker T, you <clears throat> primarily went on a, a left turn and went down this route. Uh, I'm going to take some of these rooms, get rid of some of these rooms, and probably make it primarily a right uh, turn right, and then you get to that area. So not every bunker is the same. Uh, so we're talking about two bunkers here, the original Bunker T and then this Bunker C. There's more bunkers out there, uh, allegedly. Uh, let you, spoiler alert, they're not created yet, so don't necessarily go look for them. But uh, the, the, the fiction of it is that there are more bunkers. Uh, and also, <clears throat> related to the fiction of it, there will be a few letters here and there that will explain some of the backstory of the bunkers. I've created a few here. They're just sitting here. I'll be distributing them as I make my scene. So this this room I've been working on right here, it's 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 a pretty big one. Let's let's sort of go at it from how a player might. I, I've plugged some of these hallways. I'll unplug one. Whichever one will be the main one to get there. But imagine you're going down the hallway, and then you'll come in here, and then there's this room, kicking some lighting. <clears throat> uh, eventually we'll go into, uh, play. Uh, I'm only, we're going to be here for like an hour. Uh, if I get enough done, maybe I'll be able to uh, get into play mode and we'll walk around as, as actual players. We'll see how that goes. Uh, one second. Got to check a couple things. All right, so uh, I'm not exactly sure what this room is. I think I'm calling it uh, water purification. Let's see, water storage is what I've been calling it. <clears throat> uh, so there was a previous room over here uh, in bunker T. 
uh, this area right here, this yellow spot, there's, there's water there. So there was water coming through here and, and perhaps being uh, collected and refined somehow. It's, that's not what's going on in this other room. This room is it's probably a, a storage, maybe a purification room. Uh, this water down here on the ground will actually be hot. Uh, not enough to kill you, but uh, enough to be a nuisance if you're fighting creatures. Uh, these you can see these gray boxes around these whoops around these uh, these wheels these red wheels uh, turning the red wheels will release some steam and you might take a little damage or if something else is in front of it they might take a little bit of damage so that's something to keep in mind uh, <clears throat> so uh, I have some stairs uh, these trenches right here are sometimes troublesome to get into for players, and definitely non-player characters will have trouble getting into. So I always uh, try to put stairs or something in there to maybe a ramp to let the, the bad guys get up and down. So anyway, this is the door. Allegedly, we came in, and we can go down to the ground and and uh, uh, into the trench, or we can walk around the outside. And we can see there's a couple balconies up there and a walkway with some. Uh, Really weak wood. Uh, here's an exit door at the ground level. So there's, there's the one we came in, and then these, uh, I guess, uh, air filter walls. I'm not really sure what they are. To me, to me they look like uh, grates over air duct kind of things. <clears throat> if we would go in here, we could see dead end and a ramp up. Uh, some of these hallways will be opened up later on. So if we go down here. So we've, we've looped all the way around. Let's back up a little bit. Whoops, back up in the hallway. Now imagine we went this way, and we could see that I didn't plug that yet, so that's a mistake. <laughs> or it's unfinished. Whoops. <clears throat> so if we go over here, uh, this purple area is a special trigger that if you step on it, the, the, some of the wood will break and potentially you'll fall through. But there are wood beams along the edge, so you can actually still get across. And then you can go down back to our entrance again. And so if we go outside, you can see the whole thing right here. Uh, the Entrance where we came in was on the bottom right, and there's a, a I don't want to say a circle, but there's like a, a tunnels that surround the whole thing. So you can circle the whole room, and you can see the room is like much larger than the other rooms. Uh, so that's 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 a general thing in there. It'll need some lighting, uh, it'll need some bad guys, and it'll need some some things like that in there. Uh, oh, what else do we need? We are going to <clears throat> ah, okay. So now I know what I'm gonna do. So right now, uh, what I want to do is I wanted to make a uh, residence area. So in the old area, we have this section. Also, I'm, I'm Note to myself, I need to remember to put these signs up. Uh, above the each section, there's a sign. And if you mouse over the sign, it'll let you know where you're going to, like if the armory, dormitory, uh, whatever. Whatever the, the, the section is. So in these rooms, you can see this small bedroom, storage room. The door is blown off for this one. And this is a bigger one. Maybe the family lives here. So in these bunkers, people lived here a while ago. And they, they really had tight quarters. So what I want to do is I want to rework <clears throat> the pipe right there. This copper pipe, it's not, uh, not all cruddied up yet. It's a light right there. Ankh. Let's got to put those onks. Air system for air filtration, air conditioning, sexual air. 
Oh, no, that's because there was a wall here at one point. But uh and some, of course, resources that can be found here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this dormitory. I'm going to make a new dormitory. Uh, I don't know if it's literally going to be L-shaped, but I want to have like a uh, uh, sort of a cafeteria in the middle. So it's it's a section uh, to, to one side, uh, the cafeteria in the, in the center, off to one side, like, I don't know, let's say the east side or, uh, would be some rooms, and then the south side, some rooms, and then the west side, uh, the entrance, I guess, something like that. So that's how we're going to do that. Uh, and I'm just going to start by clicking on the dorms. I'm going to just dupe it. You can see the whole my whole module section. That's how I built that stuff before. Uh, I also built stuff, uh, arranged things before in a way that seemed more sensible with Bunker T. So I had, uh, besides the entrance, I had uh, a little sort of uh, check-in area and then I had uh, like a library study area and then the armory I guess for defense you know the, the first few non-essential things and then the armory is, is this room we're looking at down here and then uh, the people lived in the back and then the utility of the water thing was at the far, far end. I don't know if I'm going to be uh, that Attentive to that kind of thing, but you know we'll start we'll start building some pieces and we'll see we'll see where we get. Uh, so in this layout area of the dorms, that's not the dorms we want. This is the dorms, and I'm going to call it cafeteria instead of dorms. And in here. Uh, Uh, let's call this cafeteria. Oops, let's be here. So now, <clears throat> the central piece right here uh, is going to be uh, a room sort of like these, uh, except I need to construct it. This I just selected this room. You see, it's a pre-constructor room, as opposed to this room which is made up of all separate pieces. So what I want to do is I, I need to get some of these walls. Uh, I actually, uh, and I've put special textures on these, so I can't necessarily go to original project. So I'm just going to dupe some pieces and drag them into where I need. Uh, so, so that's one piece I have. Gonna, the cafeteria part will be uh, double height because like a lot of cafeterias are, are large. Uh, is this a new scene? Yes, it's a new scene. Uh, it is a new scene. I haven't said where it is yet, but it's part of a quest and it'll be in South Palatus area, so it's in Novia. Uh, it, there'll be a uh, concealed access to it. It won't be hidden. So anyone can sort of get in here, but uh, the, uh, there'll be a quest that will actually lead you here. Uh, the quest will start in the far hinterlands. There's a little tip for you. Uh, but this will not be in the far hinterlands. Uh, what else do I need? I got a couple walls. I need a floor. So I don't I don't want these this trench. And do I have any double height walls? No. So this is just rock. Uh, all right. So I gotta make my own floors, I guess. Unless I want to use rock. I will just use the rock. That's fine. Oh, that's the wrong rock. So what I usually do is when I start is I just get all my pieces together and <clears throat> get like sort of a palette or arrangement of things and then I just start laying things out. Uh, so uh, 
potentially, so I'm making this cafeteria area and there's some residences next to it. Uh, a lot of, uh, like Bunker T, uh, this new Bunker C, there will be a lot of blocked off corridors. So potentially there are more cafeteria areas or residences, but we're just going to worry about one. Uh, so this is, it's sort of like a fallout shelter uh, that survived a horrible event many years ago. Uh, we will use this. Uh, it won't be a huge cafeteria. It doesn't have to be huge. Uh, because this is all on the ground, potentially uh, rooms, uh, areas were not like as massive as the as this water storage area. This is probably the biggest size room I'll ever have one of these bunkers. So this will be a nice size. So hallway here, hallway there, and then tables over here. Uh, and I'm gonna duplicate this. Oops, yikes. I like these T hallways uh, because uh, besides multiple connections, let me show you why I like them. Uh, we'll find one. So it's nice in this case because I can have a corridor that goes off to nowhere. But it's also nice. Oh, here's one. Uh, no, is that one? That's that one. Oh, maybe I didn't do it so much here. I guess I did it here a little bit. Uh, you have these make these little alcoves where things just can hang out in. And here is a uh, special. It's a could be a treasure chest, could be a mimic. We have some randomization thing here. So Griffler asks, what sort of enemies will be in here? Uh, uh, probably some undead. Uh, for the quest that I'm working on, there will definitely be slimes. Slimes are related to the quest. So there'll be a big wave of slimes in one spot. Uh, uh, undead, as in, I uh, shouldn't say just undead, uh, skeletons specifically, not zombies, because uh, these people died a long, long time ago, uh, the, the residents of this place. Uh, there might be some other uh, bad guys here. Like, <clears throat> at the entrance, I want to have lava, so potentially uh, there might be other lava places with uh, lava elemental. Uh, there could also be other elementals, like an earth elemental. Uh, uh, Probably just earth elemental. Definitely not water, uh, not air. Uh, uh, just to jump ahead, uh, there would be no fishing in here. Like I said, this this is uh, heated, uh, not comfortably heated, but uh, heated to the point where it will damage you. Uh, will there be lava fishing? Uh, not in here. I, I, I'm warning. I might put a spot somewhere in the back that has lava fishing. See, I'm moving around the camera a lot. I'll try not to move it too much. I know it gets some people a little, a little sick, but uh, he's, sorry. Sorry in advance. Uh, I'm not going to put like the tea right there. I like to mix it up sometimes. Uh, let's uh, just grab this one. I like to mix it up so everything is aren't it's not too symmetrical. Uh, uh, fictionally, I guess these people sort of made use of some of the uh, layout. So some areas they were probably able to, to bust through easier, and some they weren't. So they were kind of forced to probably have a straightaway and then a turn. You know, just sort of makes sense in my mind. That's how some of these things can go. So, uh, so I'm sort of building this way. I, th I think. Let's back up a little bit. So this water storage will be back further. Probably not back that far, but it behind 
the residences. The residence will happen first. Uh, so here's, here's one of the things I can make use of some stuff. This uh, reworking things you already have is super handy. Uh, it makes things go a lot faster. It's hard to see sometimes. I'll have to go through later and check lighting. I'll do that uh, offline though. You guys won't have to worry about that. Whoops. Like that thing. Let's keep that with it. Oh, I just clicked on the wrong thing, I think. This. And this. You can see I've moved something and left those roots behind. I'll have to grab those later on. Uh, clockwork fish. Oh, pfft. that'd be kind of neat. Uh, there would not be clockworks in here uh, because of the, the fiction that relates to it. What's this thing out here? Uh, there will still be, by the way, a uh, one of these special dial doors. Uh, for those who haven't been to Bunker T, you can interact with each one of these rings separately, and as you interact with them, they spin, and it's like a combination lock. You get the right combination, and the door rolls open. I will change the combination for this to be something different than Bunker T. And I'll do that offline so you guys don't see. Uh, what was I doing here? So, I was moving some of these pieces around. I'll be moving some of these bedrooms around in a second. Um, turn that the other way. So, let me think. So, let's change this. Uh, I wish I had everything all grouped. Oh, actually, hold on a second. I don't know if this is going to work right. I think it's going to be off. Yeah. Let's put that over here for now. Let's do it like this. these things oh, that's not what I screwed up my trick this thing will go there screwed up again. Yeah, it's a little off. Hmm. 
Try to be lazy about this. It's not working how I wanted. Is it because this room is off? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put everything inside this container and then I'll be able to just rotate the container like that. That's what I want to do. long enough. Okay. Because I wanted that room to be like the first room right next to the dining area. And I think it's in the right spot. Yeah, it's in the right spot. There we go. All right. Good. Now I'm saving. Save early, save often. Griffith says you should make tech for resetting the combo every 12 hours. I don't know what combo you mean, but I'm I'm not a programmer, so I wouldn't be making the tech anyway. Oh, the combination lock. Oh. Hmm. That would be crazy. I kind of want to send you in here for quests. Uh, if I ever make one of these that's that's unquest related, that the only reason to go in here is to maybe. Uh, I don't know, fight away battle or something, maybe get a big boss, something like that would be kind of interesting. Uh, so I wouldn't do the programming, but I could do something where I guess I, I could, I could pre-make several door types, you know, door combinations, and then uh, when you came in I could randomize which one was active. And then potentially I could uh, uh, so right now, when the door opens, it just stays open. Uh, I guess I could sort of relock it too. But uh, the, the the randomizing which lock is available at uh, when the scene comes up is something I could do. It'd be a little of a hassle, but not not a huge hassle, but something something annoying I could do. To think about. Thanks, Griffler. I'll put that in my pocket. And I'll call it the Griffler protocols for the combination doors. Uh, let me see what else can I do right here. This over here. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's change some things like this. Oh, actually, let's get that out of the way. Back out of the way. I'm gonna do the another one of those room gimmicks right here. I need to do with each room. Where we go. There it is. Uh, and even though I'm copying these rooms, I'll, I'll do a little tweak of each when I'm done. So they're not exactly the same as the other ones from Bunker T. Yeah, Griffler, uh, the, uh, I guess I already said it, but uh, I don't want anyone who's on a quest to be blocked because of some super hard way to, to get access somewhere. It might be a super hard. Oh, did I screw this up? Yeah, that didn't work. Probably making this harder than it should have been. Uh, it could be hard to get into a place uh, because you want like multiple players to get into a, an area. You know. Uh, group difficulty is fine, but sort of like racking your brain because of some weird mechanic that someone make up, made up in a one-time area, that's annoying. 
if, if we had sort of like a consistent uh, puzzle concept that players were, were slowly gotten used to, like maybe there was like a a level one version of it uh, in the early scenes and then a level two version in later scenes and a really difficult one in, in uh, advanced scenes then that, that's more okay uh, potentially still a hassle oops, space on the line Oh, I keep missing the uh, angles on these things. Alright. And then... Uh, put this... Take this small room. Uh, for those of you who watch when List Rostov does maps, uh, we probably have a different, a lot of different techniques. Like he does a lot of stuff with the lighting on. I don't really like the lighting on when I'm doing this stuff. I like, uh, like everything being just sort of like natural. Closet over here. Probably should have put the closet right next to the kitchen. I guess that would probably make more sense. That's close enough. Maybe we'll do something more sensible on the other side. A lot of this stuff is moving into my little sub cafeteria folder. That's okay. Uh, Vic has more dungeon goodies. Yes, this is Bunker C. For those of you coming in late, Bunker C. It'll be in the South Palace area, part of a quest. Uh, Grifflish says, uh, the hardest part for me, getting through all the game's quests with the journal. Yeah, uh, something I really wish our journal had uh, is a search feature. Uh, because pretty quickly the journal gets so big that you're never going to look at the archive. And uh, sometimes you actually want to look at that old stuff. And it, it keeps me, like, I can't even add stuff in good conscience to the journal that is just like a tip because it's it's going to be lost in all the noise and, and you'll never be able to, to find it. Like, like if you're, if you're like a, not necessarily a brand new player or advanced player, somewhere in the middle, like, I, I'd like to sort of like remind you about something once in a while and, I, you know, some of that stuff will just get lost. It'd be nice if there was a search feature you type in something like, like, oh, there's this, uh, Blue feather, you know, what does that mean? Blue feather, like, oh, here's a several listings with blue feathers. Now I remember what it means. I forgot about that quest. That was awesome. Uh, okay, this. Put this here. Move it to my folder there. Fireplace. I like uh, little touches like fireplaces, uh, uh, bathrooms, <laughs> you know, outhouses kind of stuff. Uh, you'll see that in a lot of the things that I set up. Uh, oh, that reminds me, I'll have to put an outhouse in one of these next to the cafeteria. Uh, I don't know. I, I like to make sure, like all the creature comforts and and uh, 
actual utilities there that, that people would actually have or, or available. And we have these pieces, you know, there's, there's no reason not to put them in. Uh, and I was always like that. Like, when I was really young, I made a, a Dungeons and Dragons map. And I had a, you know, even in this, like, massive, crazy dungeon that all kids do, I had a bathroom off on one side. But it wasn't just the bathroom. Like, I had, like, at, at the at the bottom of the box that you sat on, uh, there was, uh, uh, I think it was a, gelat a small gelatinous cube under there to dispose of the waste. So, you know, I was always, like, thinking the extra level of <laughs> crazy nonsense even back then. Uh, let me see, where are we at? We'll go with this guy. Let's uh, do our overhead thing again. Get this centered. A little bucket. Select all the pieces. Same thing as Seth Bowler, looks all good. Drag them all into our new bucket. Yep. Uh, so we'll move that over here for now. So it's left over there, I'll, I'll put something else. I don't know what I'm putting there yet, but we'll put something there. Let's go. Oops, grabbing a lot of stuff there. Might be good to keep together, so let me just sort of. Skip that for now. Uh, I know. Let's do this. Uh, now we'll get back to this guy. Uh, you know what? Let's put that aside. We will do another one of these. Come on. Uh, let me see what else we got in here. What are you guys saying? The recipe book needs a search feature too. Yeah, it'd be nice if we had more search features, but I guess they're, they're not like the easiest thing to implement sometimes. Also, you know, you have to decide, you know, how you're working on things. You know, some things have high priority, some things have low priority. So I'm sure all this stuff is uh, uh, on somebody's list somewhere, somebody's to-do list. Uh, did he say an outhouse in the cafeteria as Vecadama? Right? Is it you? It's going so fast. Uh, yes, that I did say. Uh, when I say outhouse, I mean we have like these uh, uh, box toilets. Uh, I'll add those in somewhere. You, some of you might have seen those in some other dungeons, and uh, it's like a 99% sure bet that I was the one who put those in there. Uh, maybe it's so good you don't want to stop eating to use the house. Was, oh, oh, so the those the toilets are not in the cafeteria, next to the cafeteria. At the, we're not going to go gross. We're going to be reasonable. <laughs> Although it sounds pretty funny though. Uh, Wendell and Obscuro, speaking about the journal, is there a specific NPC I could talk to to clear a bugged entry about going to Blood River outskirts, then Airy? Uh, got shroud long ago. My, uh, so sometimes there are lingering quests that I can fix. Usually there's two ways I fix it, if I know about it. So first, you should uh, report that bug in the forums with like uh, some details, and then I'll be able to enter it into my to-do list and take a look. So uh, the two ways I can kind of fix it, one way is uh, on every journal, sometimes we can put a, or sometimes we do put a, uh, a special uh, there's a field where I can put in a quest flag that if you have achieved that quest flag it'll just auto clear that journal uh, and that's a good safety feature for when uh, save save the quest is like really old and before we even had this feature I'm talking about uh, you have a lingering quest but you've completed uh, 
you know, the, all the episode one quests. I can say in that journal entry, if you have like that, that final flag, just clear that journal. Just you know, archive it. That's that's fine. You you've obviously done everything. You don't need to see that anymore. Uh, usually it's not that broad. Usually it's a, it's a it's a tighter setup, which is to say, if you have finished that quest, and you still have that first, uh, you know, a, a, a short quest, like say a five step quest. If you've completed all five steps. You know, make sure to clear that first task. You know that that first task knows clear itself. If it didn't clear itself for whatever weird hiccup reason, you know definitely clear uh, auto archive it by the end of that fifth task. Uh, so that's one way to do it. And, you know if it wasn't set up that way, I can set it that way, and and then once it fixes in, it'll just sort of take care of itself. You don't even have to worry about it. The other thing I have to do sometimes, I, I can't always do it that way. Uh, sometimes it's grandfathered or, or the quest has been changed a few times or there's some like real sticky business because you have multiple choices in the quest and there's different quest items you have to get and different people you can talk to. It's crazy. So what I'll do sometimes with that is uh, it might be... So if the task has you talk to a person, uh, probably when you go to that person, I'll do some secret behind the scenes stuff to clear that task. Uh, you know, a little cleanup, like, uh, or I'll also do that sometimes if you have a quest item that you can't delete and you can't you can't get rid of it. Sometimes you can go back to the last guy you talked to and he'll sort of quietly take it out of your inventory. Uh, so so that's that's what I can do sometimes. Uh, Gwendolyn says, "Didn't think I should bug it since it's so old. Definitely bug it. Uh, you know, it's a pretty good bet that if if you have it, there's, there's probably other people who also have it, uh, and some people might think." You know they still have something to do with it, but uh, or they've just sort of resigned themselves. That'll never get fixed. But sometimes I can fix them. S sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's like a two-step quest thing, and it doesn't relate to anything big. It's just like a little side quest or something. I can just clean it up. Sometimes it's like, it's like maybe it's part of like a, a big uh, outskirts quest chain, and and it's sticky. So I have to sort of like look into it. Like, how how can I clear it without breaking like other parts of the quest? And that that's tricky. Uh, uh, I don't know how you say your name. I'm just going to call you Cirque. Uh, I want my West End Grand Tour completion quest flag to go away. Uh, yeah, you can bug that too, and I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. You know, once once you submit the bug, then I, I you know, uh, a couple times a week, I'll go through the bug form, grab those bugs, uh, quest bugs, and I'll, I'll try to uh, take care of those. I don't... Uh, I have a you know a list of to do some big tests are big and some are small. I try to you know mix and match each, so I, I won't always get to it. But uh, I like trying to uh, definitely work in some of the simple bugs uh, as soon as I can uh, and with every release. Uh, uh, and sometimes also uh, what's nice about posting on the forums is sometimes other players will share. Uh, like maybe the, a fix uh, or a workaround or troubleshooting is already in, and another player may give you a tip like, "Hey, uh, you, you know, there were changes made, and you can go fix it this way." Or, or uh, I found out that uh, uh, I've talked to this character and they'll clear it or, or whatever. Well, thanks for uh, uh, on Pusoda for posting how to post a bug report. That's pretty handy. Very considerate of you. Uh, okay, let's let's get back to this, uh, this world building business. I'm gonna grab this room right here. Uh, like grabbing the parent create folder. I don't know how much you uh, you guys can't see it. So uh, it was like this. Uh, you can see over here. I like uh, putting crates and things in a, a parent folder. I mean, you can tell already probably that I love uh, parent folders. Uh, I love putting everything like a, in a bucket. I call it like a bucket. And then uh, once everything's in the bucket, I just move the bucket as one piece. That's that's uh, very handy. Done. Let's do this. It's a storage room. Maybe it'll turn into a bathroom. I don't know right now. Double check to make sure. Looks like it lines up. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna go duplicate my fireplace over here. I have a fireplace over here as well. Uh, 
uh, where's my so it's one cafeteria uh, that is kind of acting like a hub between two small residence areas so come out of cafeteria heated and save again do that for now. Vector Gammer says, I finally got all my quests to go away that were stuck for almost a year, but it took me a long time to dump them, dump them all. I had like 15 to 20 stuck at the time I started. Uh, so uh, I guess I guess we were able to fix them, so I'm, I'm glad we were able to do that and that you were able to go back and start clearing out so many uh, it, it sucks that we we had a bunch, uh, but I'm glad uh, you're able to take care of them. I, it, it's even better now for new. I mean, your older players maybe you sort of like you know you're you're able to find workarounds or or you're okay with moving on. It's nice that newer players who come in, you know, they they uh, they don't even have these issues that that you were uh, that you uh, stuck with us through. Uh, I'm sure most of them aren't that big, but it is kind of annoying to have like a big list of. Uh, your own quest to do list where you can't tackle them all. Uh, Gwendolyn says, Oh, it's the only task I have left in my journal. I've made an effort to clear them. Yeah. If new accounts, uh, no stuck journal entries or markers for the most part. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. Yeah, the, the, the quest markers, uh, the compass markers, uh, those are a little bit different. Uh, when those first went in, you know, uh, obviously our quest system was incremental. You know, we had a, a, a bunch of uh, keyword and response setups, and then you got some quest flags, and, and you didn't really know where to go. And then at a certain point, we put in these quest markers, and uh, just with some bare bones data in them, and we've refined the data over time. Some of the early data was just, you know, the, the quest giver had... The, the marker from uh, from when you're like you might be told go get me a loaf of bread and then the, the but the turn in marker was like right there I think I would just gave you the quest instead of like where to go find the loaf of bread uh, which isn't really the, the best way so you know over time I've been fixing a lot of those markers and uh, those, those are pretty good and also uh, we've had additions to how quest markers get set up so it used to be they were all based on just on flags but now a lot of times I can set it that it's based on if you have that item or not. So uh, I can have it, uh, if you go out to get that loaf of bread, uh, the quest marker changes simply because, not because you have a quest flag, because a, a general loaf of bread isn't really going to have a quest flag on it. I could just say, like, if you have that generic loaf of bread, you'll flip those compass markers around and send you back to that guy. So there's cool things like that. Like, uh, a little hard to explain, but uh, it gets me pretty excited uh, when uh, our programmers are able to give me, like, special gimmicks like that. Uh, let me see, uh, where else am I going right here? Uh, let me do a few more of these rooms uh, to sort of uh, do a nice little setup in my little cafeteria area. Uh, actually, you know what, let's, let's, let's jump to inside the cafeteria. Uh, let's see, I'll call this props. Sometimes we call it different stuff, but we'll go props for now. Uh, so I'm going to need tables and chairs. It's a little, a little hard to see some of this stuff. So I don't normally uh, normally have this. I guess you can see my mouse. Normally I have this big, uh, the the big. Uh, scene edit window off to, to one side and I don't have everything squished but I needed to ever have everything like right in front of me for the for the stream so it's a little hard to, to move through stuff so let's switch this let's, uh, let's get like th three Looking for a, a table. It doesn't have to be awesome, just sort of like a utility table. Yeah, I like these tables. Uh, 
both of these in there. Yeah, those are the ones. And we'll pick. That looks like a, like a chair. I don't know it. Oops. Bench. I like that one. All right, so I'm just gonna do like a kind of a layout of. Uh, I'm gonna have two types of tables and chairs. So this, there's obviously not a kitchen here. That makes me wonder if I should put a kitchen somewhere. So we don't always put in uh, crafting stations, but uh, let's just assume that they do a little crafting here. At least, you know, this is uh, the equivalent of the microwave oven in this spot. I did something wrong over here. Oh, this is the one. There you go. So that'll go here. We'll have a small table like over here somehow. We'll have a small table over here. Uh, I don't know if we have enough space for three. Uh, we don't need to have that. So we'll do two. We have to have plenty of space for, for sitting. Uh, when you go to sit on a bench or a chair, the uh, you double click on that item and then the computer takes control of your character and tries to walk uh, along this invisible nav mesh, the little path and grid, walk uh, uh, you know, animate you so you can sit in the chair and everything looks kind of nice and smooth. If the path grid is sort of broken or too tight or you can't get into that seat it'll sort of give up and just sort of teleport you into it, but I don't really like that. I'd rather have you walk into it. That's the better experience. So I need to make sure that there's going to be plenty of space here and there. Uh, and Persona says, yes, the old Quest data had various problems. You've done a good job of cleaning that all up, Sanio, and appreciate that. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I also like that there's, there's less and less Quest bugs popping up uh, over time, which is pretty exciting. Uh, you know, quest bugs, level design bugs, the sort of things that overlap with me. So that kind of means like I'm not adding problems to the game uh, so much. You know, there's little things, little hiccups that I need to refine some stuff. You know, obviously I don't do everything perfect the first time. Uh, you know, like any person, uh, but uh, you know, I'm I'm doing both. Uh, I think a reasonable job putting in new stuff without causing too many problems, and then also uh, clearing up stuff that's that's been there in the backlog and it's still working out. Uh, so anyway, I put this table in. We could put it in perfect right angles, smash against the wall, but that's that's not how things go. Things things go imperfectly. People just sort of put it down and they nudge it, and that's how that's how life works. Uh, so this is a bench. This is a seat. So you can see uh, there's a the interaction box around it and the little green dot. The little green dot is where your character is going to move to, and then he'll animate sitting down. So he's actually sort of standing on the green dot. And you can see with this bench, the bench has three seats on it and the three green dots. That's how the benches work. Uh, some shorter benches might have two dots. Uh, you know, two seats. Uh, I'm actually gonna change something. I'm gonna do a little less action to make it feel a little bit better for the seat. Let's make it 0.75. Let's make them both the same. And then I could also fit some other tables in as well. So let's push this against the back. A little bit of an angle, I guess. That might be okay like that. That 
that distance is it's like a lot like who sits that far back but I, uh, we need to just sort of have a, a bunch of space and then we'll see if it works and if it, if it works then we'll leave it as is if it doesn't work I need, may need to move it out a little bit but I don't know so something else I do in some places I might oh, maybe I'll do maybe just for fun Uh, so this place uh, has it been uh, raided before? Maybe. Uh, did someone try to move some things around to better defend themselves? Maybe. It's kind of tough. Uh, could I, uh, so uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm thinking, should I block a doorway with this? Well, nah, I'm not. I'm not gonna. So this, the ground is uneven, so it's a little can be a little bit of a problem. You know what? This irritates me. Uh, some uh, 3D modelers, they, they'll model the whole thing and it'll actually be great, but then they don't do like the parts that they expect to be on the bottom. They don't anticipate like level designers like me. We, we, we're going to rotate that thing. <laughs> I'm rotate it. Uh, anyway, so I don't like that hole in the bottom, so that goes that plan. That goes that plan. Thanks a lot, 3D modeler. Uh, let's move this like this. Might be able to get around this way. Hmm. I like moving the table out like this because then people can walk in there. That looks like it's probably plenty of room to walk through. Sometimes these tables, uh, as you can see, that they face a certain way. So I like to rotate it so that way there's no pattern going on, uh, or, or to, to break the patterns that might be going on. Patterns really take you out of it, I think. Oops. You know what I could do with that blocking thing that I was just talking about? I could do this. I'll show you. Uh, that's the one. Okay. So I'm trying the avatar with destructible crates and barrels. Put a crate here. In order to get in the room, you have to destroy a couple crates. That's it. Pretty simple. So somebody uh, blocked it up a little bit. Something else with the crates. Uh, like I talked about the patterns. There's a pattern there I don't like, so I will go like this. And of course, obviously, I've, I've, nothing's perfectly right angle here. Someone, someone placed this here. Uh, actually, let me put this one back. Like that. 
This one I will So what I wouldn't do is, uh, I, I would probably try to keep in mind uh, monsters. Like, will it, would a monster get through there? Well, they're probably not going to break this stuff. Uh, will I keep this stuff in here? Maybe I'll put something extra fancy in here, uh, or randomly fancy. Uh, like maybe there's a reason to go in here. Like if you come through here multiple times, maybe there's a reason to break through that. Like maybe in here. Maybe I'll put like a chest. Maybe sometimes it's a chest. Maybe sometimes it's a weak mimic. Sometimes it's a strong mimic. So that's that's the kind of things I'll do sometimes. Uh, I'll probably put some sort of like big lights in here at some point uh, when I do a lighting pass. Right, instead of putting tables over here. I'm going to put them over here instead. And I'll put something else against the wall. So there's a group. Tables. And Something else I will do is this kind of thing. Get it out of there. Mix it up a little bit, people. Uh, it's good for the nav mesh too to, to, to change things around like that once in a while. So, with all these chairs and tables in here, things are going to get tight. Whoops. What did I go? What happened? So this chair is going to be down. So that means I need to disable the sit in it mechanism. check that later when I'm walking through it. reason why I did that is because uh, I wanted to make sure that there's extra space to, to to get through there. And I think that's fine and this is fine. You can get in that so that should all work okay. And if, if you can't get through here, maybe that's okay as long as you can sort of get around this way. But I, I think it's actually alright. I think I should put that I can push this table a little bit further this way. Because there's no bench over there. So that should be plenty of space and you should be able to sit there fine. Why are other game companies not this transparent to let players see how things are built as they're being built? I don't know. Maybe some do. Uh, probably the, the smaller games makes more sense. The bigger games are always... Uh, they plan things a lot further in advance, and uh, it's hard to show because of the iterative process that they have. You know, I've been part of bigger games, and uh, it's just rough. Uh, we're, we're a little easier because, uh, uh, as a small team, you know, each of us is sort of has extra responsibilities, and we uh, we know our, the parameters of what we're allowed to do and what we're allowed to show. Like as far as like the quest stuff that I'm allowed to show, it's up to me to decide what to show. You know, we don't just have to decide as a team. I'm the one working on the quest, and I know what needs to be secret and what can be shown. You know, what's great to tease. Uh, so yeah, you know, it's up to the companies if they want to show it, they can show it. Sometimes they they can't because it's just uh, there's just too many moving parts. There's less moving parts with us, so it's, it's easier to make that call. Uh, Cirque uh, was talking about partial block, like they started or put a hole in the middle of the bench, we can still jump over it. So 
I don't want to put a bench that you can jump over uh, to get away from bad guys. I, I want the bad guys to be able to follow you. So, so that's why I put in these crates because once you break those crates, a bad guy can go through there just like you can. So that, that, that's why I did that. Also, I got to be careful about little holes like this. I don't want you to get stuck in that hole. So I got to make sure there's a, a nice amount of space that you can break the stuff and then the path is open, but you don't get stuck. And, and bad guys don't get stuck. Uh, so obviously we got a, a nice little eating area getting worked out. Uh, oh, I know what I can look for. So we have some pre-made stuff as well. Uh, shelf, always a good thing to look for. Not a bookshelf. Should be up, which is which? Is that the one? No. Nope. This? Oh, that's, that's a good one. Come on. So these things are all interactable. You can grab the stuff from it. See, it just makes sense that uh, there are things you can. Yeah, they've, these people have prepped properly for the end of the world. And they have all supplies ready to go. I know what I should do. I'm going to do that with this one. This is how tables around uh, chairs around the world were stored. Of course, they do it like this sometimes here. And then once again, I gotta turn off the sitting mechanism so you you don't try to sit in an upside down chair. That's cray cray. No, not that one. Which one is that one? Oh yeah, I'll take that. Uh, so this is probably done. One last thing uh, I guess I could do is, uh, you know, the walls are kind of boring. The ceiling's kind of boring. Got some stuff here. Just save again. Uh, if we open the door and shoot over the crates and blink over and back, can the creeps break the crates to get to us? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Let's see. Uh, they are allowed to interact with it. Yeah, so they might. Uh, if they can shoot you, they'll obviously shoot you. If they can. Uh, if their AI says that they're allowed to break crates, then they'll do it because they have. The, the crates don't have restrictions against bad guys using them. Uh, so, potentially. Uh, so, what do we need on these walls? We need. Uh, looking in the other areas for inspiration. What do you need? Oh, I know one thing I need. Uh, so we don't need a, one of those keep it warm stoves because we kind of have this. This would probably serve that purpose. We need. Where are the lights? I don't know what I did with the lights in here. Did I not have any lights? I 
grab one of these. Just close it up for a second so we can. All right, so these vents, I like adding these vents. Uh, there's a couple reasons why I like adding these vents. Uh, one is they just seem like, you know, uh, places where air can come in and out. But, uh, they're also Uh, potential light sources. So you'll watch in a second. Uh, copy this. So there's a light source right there, and if I kick the lighting in, it doesn't actually reach the ground, but I'll fix that in a second. Uh, I will just leave one of those on, but I'll have other lights on the on the lower down that players can control. And having lights that players can control is pretty good because I know a lot of players like to use uh, uh, to they like to turn on or off lights as markers to, to help them understand uh, where they've gone, you know, what hallways have gone down. So if they leave all the lights on as they go down hallways, then they know that hallway's done, this hallway's done, this hallway's dark, I haven't done that yet, let's go down there. Uh, I like to have up to half the lights on, uh, so it's not completely pitch black if you're going in there. Uh, so it might be like one third to one half of the lights are actually on, and then the other half are off. Uh, usually it's sort of alternating. It might be like you know light on, light off, light on, light off, but not always so rigid. Uh, spotlight only reaches so far, so well, let's stretch that. Now it goes down to the ground. Uh, the lighting here is just a guide. It's not exact uh, because even if the light's turned off, it'll actually show it is on. But it's it's a good uh, good indicator of what what might be uh, how things should work out. Uh, I might come back here later, and on the tables, I might put like a couple of plates and stuff. Uh, we have a I spell that wrong. Oh, it's probably not dish. Oh, it's probably not plate. It's probably dish. No, nope. I don't know. I'll go. I'll go back later. Uh, and then on the wall, I could do more things like this, but maybe that's a maybe that's a, a thing for that room. I think more likely, uh, let's assume, oh, I know what I'll do. So we have a lot of rugs in the game. I don't want to do too many rugs because I think uh, this place has had a, a hard time of it, so I think Oh, and also this is not that great. I do this kind of thing sometimes. We have a, I think we have a couple of tapestries that might be better though. These wall hangings. was kind of clean. Yeah, 
Yeah, so did you ever see the underside of your rug? There it is right there. Nothing. Nothing. So wipe your feet before you go inside. Oh, you know what? There's a... We're, we're doing a... It's something you, you don't normally do, but we're doing a switch right here from completely flat tile to a rugged floor. And if you look, you can see it doesn't match up exactly. It's like a dip right there. I wonder if this uh, secret magic. Don't tell anyone. Whoops. Let's see this one. I might come back with something better later on, but usually what I do is I'll have a uh, a little uh, I don't think I can really do the gimmick here. Oops. Little little uh, cube, a little blocker that just sort of like runs along the edge of the transition area, so it looks simple. You know, uh, invisible. Just like a little runner around the edge of the floor. All right, so let's get back to looking for something to hang on the wall. Uh, tapestry wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't rug. Uh, the, we have some crazy names for some things sometimes. Uh, cloth. There it is. Not too exciting. It was just uh, sound killers, I guess, to keep it from being echoey. Can I do it like this? So you flipped it the other way, which is nice that uh, whoever made this has both sides available. So that I'm able to flip it around and I have the exact same thing in both sides. Oops. There you go, break up the wall a little bit. What else is in this cloth group? Interesting. Uh, we like to use these these things a lot. Uh, you'll, you'll see these in a lot of places. We'll do that kind of thing. Or, uh, you know, like this. Sometimes we'll double them up. I'm not, I'm not uh, doing like perfect right angles or anything, but yeah, we'll sort of mash them together and you'll have like a runner along the whole table. Uh, sometimes we put out some of this stuff, and, uh, yeah, it's a piece of fabric, but sometimes we'll put it out, like say next to a bathtub sort of thing, and, and we'll, it'll look like a, like a towels left out. Uh, sometimes we have like this piece of cloth, these little ones, like this. This was not that little. But if we shrink it. Let's just someone like threw it in the corner. Place it a little bit more lived in. Anything else we have in this? Like an awning kind of thing. 
No, not in there. So Sark says, uh, I'm trying to submit a bug report of my ice bow being all wonky around me when shooting it, but I can't put a screenshot in the post. Yeah, uh, the the message boards, you know, we don't host pictures like that. You can go to like uh, Imgur, or however you say it, I-M-G-U-R dot com, and you can like put a picture there and then a link to that picture. Uh, or there's, there's other free sites where you can store pictures like that. Uh... And uh, what else we got here? So uh, one of the gimmicks here, gimmicks. One of the themes here will be uh, like I was saying. Whoops, let's back up. Lava. Uh, I'm going to change the entrance a little bit. Uh, There'll be uh, some of these uh, roots and, and stuff here, but once you get inside, uh, there's no roots in here like there were in the bunker T. So there's this lava here. So something that's actually in the lava ish area. Uh, there's no wood in here. These these ladders are metal. Uh, so I, I'm gonna have a way. Uh, it'll be. A, Maybe a little annoying for some. I know I'm not the best jumping puzzle guy, but there'll be these uh, platforms that you can jump on from one to the other. It won't be crazy difficult. Uh, and if you fall on the ground, you'll start taking damage because you're in lava. But hopefully you can run to the ladder fast enough and, and get back up. Or, you know, I guess run ahead and get back up. Uh, or, hmm... Maybe, uh, uh, maybe instead if I had, you know, like, this is, this is not what I'm going to do, but maybe there were, like, pipes underneath. Maybe you could, like, jump across pipes. That would actually work a little better with this kind of thing, perhaps. Pipes are a little safer, too, than, than an actual jumping puzzle. And I like, like being able to go across here. If I have some other lava thing deeper in, maybe there's a jumping puzzle in there for, just for randomness to go along with the fishing, I suppose. Uh, resurrection Ankh in the middle of the lava? Yes, uh, because if you die down here, I want to, uh, I want you to be able to sort of just you know, jump out. And this resurrection, uh, this uh, it won't resurrect you right in the lava. The resurrection point is actually out here next to this Ankh. So you'll, you'll be put to a safe spot. Uh, we we uh, sometimes will put Ankhs in weird spots because players will jump to their deaths or walk into high threat areas, uh, you know, a pit of spikes or something, and you know maybe they're trapped, maybe doors shut on the left and right, and now they're a dead guy and they can't get out and they don't want to, you know, have that, you know, uh, wait for the full resurrection period. So it used to be more important, I guess, when yeah you know, items would take decay. But uh, anyway, it's you know. Uh, there's no reason to not, you know, let you out as soon as possible. Just, you know, as long as we let you out in the, to the correct spot. Like, I don't want to have you resurrect and then advance over to here. But if you resurrect and retreat back to a slightly earlier spot, then that's, that's fine. Uh, so Tina says, resing you to one of the stepping stones would have been fun. Um, hmm. I'm going to make a note for myself about that. Uh, so, what are we talking about? Lava room, stepping stone, jumping puzzle, Ankh reses you on stepping stone. Alright, I've got a note for that. Uh, also, uh, fishing in lava. Room. Uh, I don't want to have just a lava room, but it would be nice if there was something on the other side of the lava room that you have to get to. And so the lava room is then the challenge. Sometimes the challenge to get from A to B is monsters. Sometimes it's a, it's a brain-working puzzle, like the, the vault door. I'm trying to turn around, but I can't do it. No, because I just hit save, and sometimes it takes a second to catch up. Uh, there we go. 
sometimes the puzzle works your brain, uh, but sometimes the puzzle is uh, it's a physical puzzle where you have to jump across something or tightrope something or or stand in a certain place to make something happen. Oh Lord, he's listening listening to me. I'm sorry, everyone. Yep, that's that's too bad. You shared it with the group, and now I'm taking notes. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, another thing that's fun with Onks, and I don't think I'll put it in here because I don't want you to skip. But uh, we also have these. So our, our Onks are resurrection points, and sometimes instead of an Onk, sometimes we have a, a chaos symbol. And the chaos symbol is neat if you haven't run into one. It's neat because it'll resurrect you to a random spawn spot in that same scene. So if this was a chaos marker and you died in there, it might send you here or it might send you to, uh, I don't know where we have our other onks. Anywhere the other onks are. Here? No. Here. Right here. Uh, but uh, i got to be careful about that. I, I definitely like to put onks at the start of a section. Uh, a major section. Like, I don't want to put onks everywhere, but, you know, before you go in, or, you know, at the start of every scene, there's always an onk. And then when you go in, uh, we need this onk right here. You, you don't need an onk right here, but if, if you've gone in a little while and you're moving to a next, new section, I'll probably put an onk somewhere. I don't remember where we had one in, in this. Oh, I remember we had one, uh, uh, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. So it's not that big a map, so that's why I guess I didn't have a billion on. So there's one here. And then I think one just before, yeah, right here. And then now you're in here. So if you die in here, uh, these doors will close. This is sort of like a closed in. You start the boss fight and you're sort of locked in kind of thing. If you die in the middle, this Ankh will send you out to this spot right there. Uh, this, is, this is the old bunker though. This is not the new one. I'm just uh, sort of example the sort of stuff will do. So as I keep working, this this old stuff will go away, and it'll eventually be a path on this side, which will lead to these things. It'll be uh, the final version of the residence with cafeteria, this water storage area, the lava onk, uh, lava with onk on the on the stepping stone. Is this new bunker uh, bunker in chapter two? Uh, now, uh, so from the start. Uh, I mentioned that this is Bunker C. It'll be uh, you'll be sent here as part of a quest. The quest will start in Far Hinterlands. Uh, the whole quest line will be in South Palatus, uh, and uh, uh, that's all, all I'm saying about it for now. Uh, this scene will oh, uh, I guess I also said this scene will not be in Far Hinterlands. It'll be in a different scene, uh, probably one related to lava. Paint. And uh, uh, you'll have uh, a couple conversation choices. There'll be like a wave battle. Uh, uh, I guess a, uh, a pretty tough single player could probably do it on his own. Uh, I was kind of hoping it would sort of like a two or three person kind of event uh, for the wave battle, but maybe it won't be. I don't know. You know, you guys are always tougher than we expect, so. We you know, you'll, you'll find that the ways to sort of dominate. Uh, it'll be a, a mildly quirky little quest, I think. Uh, starts off a little bit fairy tale ish, I guess, but uh, I think you'll like it. Uh, it's, it's one I had sort of like in the back of my mind for a long time. I, I decided I want to, to, to finally get it done. I've been working on it a little bit here and there, like I do with a lot of stuff. You know, people know, like, uh, you know, all time I, I did over time. Uh, the the clink uh, changes I did over time. This this I've been uh, it's been percolating in the back of my head for a long time, and now I'm sort of getting it done here. All right. Anyway, uh, I think I'm gonna wrap things up right now. I haven't had lunch yet, so I'm gonna go do that. Also, I'm super happy that Hero hasn't interrupted us. Here's my dog. People know about my dog. Uh, he's been uh, napping. Uh, behind a closed door over there so I think that helped because once he hears me talking he comes out and he wants he wants attention and treats and both attention and treats uh, so uh, I always need to consciously remember to do the raid 
uh, who else is up? Let me double check. You know what? I see Gix is up. Gix was uh, once uh, one of us uh, who worked in our train of the Avatar. I'm going to send you guys open to him. And uh, I want to thank you, everyone, for joining me today. And I hope you like seeing uh, this little piece of uh, the new Bunker C that I'm working on, which will be uh, somewhere in South Valens. And uh, let's see. Read. All right, everyone, uh, go over, uh, say hi to Gix for me.